Hello students, today I have prepared a video on a topic called as OSPF, Open Shortest Path First. It is a very very important topic from exam point of view as well as it is very important conceptually. So let's try to understand what you mean by OSPF routing protocol. Before going into the exact detail of the OSPF, we should first understand the term AS which means Autonomous System IGP and EGP. Internet as a worldwide network is very difficult to be administered and managed by a single company or an organization. So, there is a need to divide this whole internet into small autonomous system. So what do you mean by autonomous system? Autonomous system is a collection of routers under a common administration such as a company or an organization. An AS is also known as a routing domain. Typical example of an autonomous system are companies, internal network and an ISP network. So basically autonomous system is a group of a router which are being administered by a single ISP or a company or an organization. What do you mean by IGP? <clears throat> IGP are used to exchange a routing information within an autonomous system. So routing which take place within an autonomous system is being considered as IGP. While EGP is used to exchange a routing information between different autonomous system. So here dynamic routing has two categories. IGP and EGP. IGP is nothing but routing of the data within an autonomous system while EGP is nothing but a routing of the data among or between different autonomous system. So our topic OSPF is nothing but under interior gateway protocol which means a routing of the data within an autonomous system. We know very well OSPF is a category under link state routing protocol. So let's go into the details of OSPF. <clears throat> OSPF which is open shortest path first. Here the large network can be broken into small areas so the router in one area knows less topology and they don't have information about the other area router. Creating OSPF areas result in smaller database which reduce the memory consumption and processing. So here if we try to understand they are talking about the OSPF areas. What do you mean by OSPF areas? You will better understood when we are going to see this diagram. So in case of OSPF, as we know very well, it is IGP. So it is dedicated to an autonomous system. Let's consider this whole box as a single autonomous system. So here the autonomous system is being divided into small areas. Here maximum 65,535 areas can be formed. If you look carefully here the backbone area is being numbered as area 0, area 1, area 2 and it may go up to 65,535 areas. Now, what is the function of this backbone area? Backbone area is nothing but also said to be 
primary area which summarize the details of the whole autonomous system and provide it to the other autonomous system with the help of autonomous system boundary router. If you observe carefully at the border of each area there is area border router. So here in this case this area border router will summarize the details of area 1 and give it to the backbone area. Similarly, this border router will summarize the details of area 2 and provide it to the backbone area. One more important point to be noted over here, if area 1 wants to talk or provide any detail to area 2, there is no router being connected in between them. If they want to pass any details among themselves, it is compulsion that it has to be passed through the backbone area. That's the reason it is also said it as primary area. So, one has to remember OSPF maintains a two layer hierarchy. As from the diagram we know very well, the primary area also called as backbone area has numbered at area 0 while all the other areas are being said of backbone area and it may range up to 65,535. In this diagram we have shown up to area 2. Talking about the characteristics of OSPF. The administrative value for OSPF is 110. It supports classless network. It supports variable length subnet masking or classless interdomain routing and has unlimited hop counts. It supports hierarchical network. A route propagation over here can be done with the help of multicasting. So here we know very well OSPF is nothing but link state routing protocol and the metric which is used for this routing is either the delay which is based on round trip time, the throughput or the reliability. So whenever we talk about OSPF this diagram plays a major role to explain about it. Next part, talking about the OSPF types of link. So OSPF has four different types of link. They are point to point link, transient link, stub link and the virtual link. We will try to understand them with the help of the diagram. So here comes <coughs> In point-to-point -point link, two routers share a single channel in between them. This type of links are present between two routers and as it is point-to-point, -point, there lies no host routers in between the two connected routers. As we can see from the diagram, there is point-to-point -point link and between two routers there won't be any host or the router connected between them. So this was the point to point link, the first type. The next transient link. If there lies a large number of routers attached to a network. So here in the diagram you can see let's say there is an Ethernet network. If there are large routers, let's say A, B, C, D, E and it may go on. If there are large number of routers and if they are connected to a network, we say it as transient link. So it can be represented in two ways, realistic and unrealistic. So this is unrealistic wherein they are being connected like a mesh topology while in realistic representation, it is like a star topology wherein all the routers are being connected to a single point called as designated 
router talking about the third link type stub it is a network that is connected with a single network the data packets are sent and received are through the same router so here a network is just connected to a single router so all the packets or the data which are received by this network can be through the same router that means sending as well as receiving would take place with the help of a single router so this is the actual representation of it and the last is the virtual link there may be some situation arises when the link is broken due to some reason that time the network administrator create a virtual link between the two communicating routers this type of link would be said as virtual link talking about the link state advertisement there are different link such as router link network link summary link summary link to as external link talking about the router link advertising of router with four different link types as you can see from the diagram four different links are being shown to transient network to point to point network to stub network and the last is the virtual network next talking about the type of ospf packets it may be of hello database description link state request link state update link state acknowledgement which may have a common format in such a way finally talking about the comparison between distance vector and routing a distance vector and link state routing protocol the example we know very well in case of distance vector it is rip in case of link state it is ospf talking about the convergence time it is high it is low configuration it is simple while it becomes complex as it is dedicated towards the large network here the routing table is updated depending upon the 30 seconds or the 90 seconds here the updation of the routing table take place when some changes happen in a network finally talking about the application or the use distance vector is dedicated for small network infrastructure while link state routing protocol is dedicated for good size or a large type of a network a routing protocol a routing loop plays a major factor so distance vector routing protocol may suffer from the routing loop problem while link state routing protocol do not suffer any routing loop problem so this is a major advantage of link state routing protocol and finally talking about the routing matrix as it is a distance vector routing protocol the matrix has to be a distance in terms of hop count if you remember well hop count means the number of routers which comes into the picture while the data goes from the source to destination talking about link state the metric is the bandwidth so overall depending upon the application whether it is small network or the large network whether we need configuration as a simple or difficult all it depends which routing protocol to be considered thank you for watching this video